Okay, so this is gonna be a quick tutorial on how you can use your periodic table to help you do quantum numbers. So first things first, there's four quantum numbers. The first quantum number is what energy level your electron's in. So if you take a look down the numbers on the side, one through seven, three, four, four five, six, four and five, and two, three, four, five, six, uh, make note that your helium, even though it's way over here, is still part of your first energy level. So if I put my finger on, let's say, carbon, I'd be like, well, the first quantum number is two. If I put my finger on deuterium, I'd say that the first quantum number is four. If I put my finger on uranium, I'd say the first quantum number is five. And when I say uranium, what I mean is the 93rd electron, the last electron in each of these particular orbitals. So the second quantum number tells us the shape. So the shape of the orbital is um, either going to be S, P, D, or F. And if we take a look at our, our um, periodic table, this is our S block, this is our P block, this is our D block, and this is our F block down here. Each of these corresponds to a number. Zero corresponds to S, D corresponds to two, and P corresponds to 1, and F corresponds to 3. Um, what that means is this, is I can put my finger now on any electron, let's say the 11th electron, and I can say that the first quantum number is 3, and the second quantum number is 0. Or I could say the first quantum number for, the, for phosphorus, the 15th electron, is 3, and since it's in a P orbital, the second quantum number is 1. But the thing that's, that the periodic table really shines at is it also can help us with the third and the fourth quantum number. Now, uh, if you are having trouble understanding what each of those these quantum numbers are, I encourage you to go back and look at the uh, previous videos that we that talked about that particular intro to, to um, uh, quantum numbers. Um, but here's what's really cool. Since p orbitals come in a set of three, the way we number the p orbitals, we go zero in the middle and we go minus one and we go one. So if we're actually putting electrons in orbitals, we go minus one, zero, one, and then go back again and go minus one, zero, one. So on the periodic table itself, we can write this as minus one, zero, one, minus one, zero, and one. Make sure this applies only for this column right here. And that means that everything in this column right here, the third quantum number is minus one. Everything in this column is zero. Everything in this column is one, minus one, etc. So if I were to ask you, what are the three quantum numbers for phosphorus? I could say the first quantum number is three. It's in a p orbital, which means that the second quantum number is one. And then if I look over at it, it's in the, in the one category. And so the third quantum number would be a one. The d orbital works exactly the same way, except the d orbital, there are five uh, orbitals that we're putting electrons in, and we go minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, and then we go back and go minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. So when we're putting electrons in here, we're going to go minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and then minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. Similarly, we now know the th three quantum numbers for any of the elements in the D block. So for example, if I said zinc, I go zinc is in the third energy level, so its first quantum number is three. It's in a D orbital, so its second quantum number is two. And it's in the two column, so its third quantum number is a two. The F block, similarly, uh, there's seven orbitals, I'm not going to show you with all my fingers, and they go minus three, minus two, minus one, all the way across. So we're going to go minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. And now we have all of the third quantum numbers for the F block. Um, again, do an example of this. If I said uranium and I asked for the first three quantum numbers for uranium, I'd go first quantum number is five. The second quantum number is three because that's what an F shape is. And the third quantum number would be a minus one. So both these things in here are minus one. Lastly, uh, we love the S block because the third quantum number for both columns always is zero. So the first the first quantum number is based on what the row is, but then the second and third quantum number is always gonna be a zero. So if I said rubidium, I can immediately go five, zero, zero, because the shape is a zero, and the, the um, third quantum number, the, which orbital is in, is also zero, because there's only one orbital for s. Lastly, and this is super cool, the fourth quantum number tells you whether or not you're the first or second electron in an orbital. Now again, we're free back to the previous videos to figure out what that actually means. But on the periodic table, it's really neat because if you take a look at your p orbitals, the first three are all going to be 
one electron in, and the second three are going to be the second electron in. So if we put a dotted line going up here, or a line, everything on this side, these first three columns, are all going to be plus one half. Everything on this side is going to be minus one half. So that means that right now I could do the four quantum numbers for, let's say, carbon, and I would go, first quantum number is two, the second quantum number is a one, because p is equal to one. The, I, this is kind of messy here, I apologize. The third quantum number is a zero, and since it's on the plus one half side, the fourth quantum number is a plus one half. Similarly, for the D block, if I counted over five, one, two, three, four, five, and put a dotted line up here like this, this side is plus one half, this side is minus one half. So if I did, for example, uh, scandium, I could go the first quantum number is three, the second quantum number, since the D orbital is two, it's a minus two for the third, and it's a plus one half for the fourth. Uh, the S block is super great because there's only two columns here. The first column is plus one half. Oop, I wrote a minus there. Plus one half, and the second column is minus one half. So, uh, now the example of rubidium, I go, rubidium is five, and the two middle column numbers are always zero. So, zero, zero, and then it'd be a plus one half for the fourth number. And then down at the very bottom, if you were to go between gadolinium and tiberium, we're going to do it underneath, which is not the greatest. Uh, this side is plus one half, and this side is minus one half. So if I, again, if I were to do uranium, I'd go the first quantum number is five because it's in the fifth energy level. The uh, shape is a three for the second quantum number. It's in a minus one orbital, and it's in a plus one half. Uh, it's the first electron in there, so it's a plus one half. So I, I would encourage you guys to look um, back at the intro to, to uh, quantum numbers to get an idea of how the quantum numbers work. But then this periodic table right now, it will allow you, just by writing it up this way, to be able to put your finger on, the, on any number of electrons and be able to determine the quantum numbers for that particular electron. Let me remind you again, though, when we say, hey, give me the four quantum numbers for chlorine, there are actually 17 electrons in chlorine, and each one of those 17 electrons will have a unique set of four quantum numbers. That's called the Pauli exclusion principle. When I say give me the, the four quantum numbers for chlorine, what I really mean is give me the four quantum numbers for the 17th electron in chlorine and only that electron. So hopefully this has been helpful, and uh, this will help you do well on your test. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.